I'm Cape Jewel, and this is Comic Smack, your weekly, daily, all the time, anytime comic show where I give you your fix of everything you need to know from the world of comic books and superheroes. And on today's show, we are taking a closer look at Justice League No Justice issue number four, the grand finale you've all been waiting for. Can our heroes defend Earth and stop it from suffering the same fate as Kalu, or is it all too late? Let's hop on in together and find out. Alrighty then, so picking up from where the last issue left off, the Omega Titans minus the Wisdom One are all camped out outside Earth. They're looking at the place the same way I look at a Chinese buffet and brother you better believe they didn't fill up on bread before they got here. Now back with our heroes, they just narrowly managed to escape in Brainiac's big skull ship. They're still licking their wounds after their failure. Oh sure, they saved all the people of Kalu. In fact, they saved multiple universes, but that might actually be more trouble. All those stolen universes are quickly expanding back to normal, forming what is essentially their new quadrant, a ghost quadrant if you would. Then of course, there's all the Kalu and refugees are gonna have to find a home, so basically the superhero's troubles are only starting. Then there's the matter of Vil Drox. He's been no help since they broke him out of prison, and he continues to be a downer back on the ship, saying that, you know, all of this is the Earthling's fault. They broke the source wall, they killed Brainiac, and because of that, the planet Earth deserves the horrible Omega Titan punishment that's coming their way. And if that's not enough, he then basically declares himself Brainiac 2.0, which he technically was anyway, teleports to Earth and says that he's going to hasten and the destruction of Earth as revenge for the destruction of Kalu. But wait, the Kaluans didn't even like you, Vrildrox. They locked you up. In fact, even your father didn't like you all that much, and now you're going to continue his work and avenge your planet? That doesn't make sense. Why are you suddenly the villain now in the final issue? Now back on Earth, Green Arrow, who has just been a real trooper this whole series, once again tries to stop Amanda Waller from nuking all these new energy trees that have sprouted up all across the world. He gets some help from Hal Jordan and the Green Lantern, Oh yeah, they were in this book too, they were at the Source Wall, but now they're back on Earth before eventually all the other heroes join the crisis on the planet's surface. Once again, they feel that Brainiac probably had a contingency plan in place for something like this, but Waller stole all of Brainiac's files when she killed him, which means she's gonna have to give them up to the heroes if she doesn't want to die along with everyone else. Cyborg, using his Cosmic Core processors, manages to riddle out that they could probably trick the Omega Titans if they could make one of the trees bear the fruit that they're after. Ah yes, the old Tree of Might strategy, a classic. Once again, all four of the teams have their own job, whether it be using their brute strength to rip one of the seeds out of the planet, supercharging it with cosmic energy, and then further charging it with all the different cosmic energy forces. That includes entropy, of which the planet Earth actually represents, ugh, that's a little dour, you think Deathstroke's gonna be the one to charge it with entropy, but no, it's Lex Luthor who does it, signaling his turn to villainy once again. After that, it's only a matter of pointing the supercharged fruit at one of the Omega Titans, hoping they'll take the bait and eat each other like this was a zombie movie. Green Arrow does the job of aiming, and I think that's so cool. The plan ends up totally working and going off without a single hitch. Huh, I guess at the end of the day, our heroes absolutely do know what they're doing. But hey, even though the threat is ended, this isn't where the comic ends because we still need a dozen different prologues to set up a bunch of the new books that are coming out soon. You get Batman meeting with Black Lightning and talking about setting up the Outsiders, or resetting up the Outsiders, because in Dark Knight's Metal it was implied that Batman had already set them up. Those energy trees never actually left Earth, and so Wonder Woman and Zatanna agree to form a new Justice League Dark to go investigate them, go read their mini. Green Arrow, for his service to the Justice League, is actually given the Justice League's kill switch, essentially making him the most powerful man on Earth. And hey, Martian Manhunter, who probably got some of the best focus out of this whole series, he's named the brand new chairman of the brand new Justice League. It, is that like a leader, or is that just like more of an honorary position? I don't know, I guess we'll have to read Scott Snyder's brand new Justice League number one coming next week. So that was Justice League No Justice issue number four, everybody. And overall, it was enjoyable, if slightly rushed feeling. It really does feel like they could have had multiple extra issues to flesh out this finale here. And that they kind of had to kick in the turbos to finish off the Omega Titan threat before essentially setting up several new Justice League related titles that are coming out soon. Perhaps the most disappointing part is how the villains are served. The Omega Titans are built up as these, you know, awe-inspiring world destroyers, and yet in the end they're defeated quite easily. Vril Drox is another weird one. He just flips a switch and goes, okay, I'm the bad guy now, and then he just disappears 
spoilers at the end. If nothing else, the art is thankfully more consistent here in the finale than it was in the previous issue. It sticks the landing, but maybe not as hard as I wanted it to. Overall, a 7 out of 10. It gets the job done in letting the reader know that the Justice League is in very good hands with Scott Snyder. So that's the video, everyone. I hope you enjoyed it, and as always, why not take a closer look at some of these other projects I've been working on. Then you can follow me on Twitter and Facebook, at Cape Joel, so you're always up to speed on what I'm doing next. And hey, if you like what I do and feeling in a charitable mood, why not check out my Patreon link down in the description. Patrons get exclusive access to videos and content, and you can do so for only as little as a dollar a month. So until next time, everyone, this has been Cape Joel. Thank you so much for watching and listening, and I'll see you all again next time. Bye-bye.